Hey guys, Bios and Ramos, and this Sunday, November 27th, 1 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time, Miami Dolphins will be kicking it off against the Houston Texans at Hard Rock Stadium. The Houston Texans are 1-8-1, and and while the Dolphins are coming into this game 7-3, and coming fresh off their bye, and uh, lots to talk about there. Now, when we look at the ESPN matchup predictor, Houston's favored 13.5% chance of winning to the Miami Dolphins 86.4 and then a tie is at 0.1% and then in terms of odds Dolphins are favored minus 14 on the spread money line minus 800 Miami plus 550 for the Houston Texans that's a lot and uh over on their set at 47 so uh this is one of the more larger spreads I've seen from uh in favor of the Dolphins in quite some time so just something to think about there uh, but let's talk about some injuries real quick before we get into anything else. Uh, Houston Texans, Derek Stingley Jr. cornerback is out with a hamstring injury. Uh, this was confirmed as of yesterday. And then uh, no one else in terms of within the last month, aside from Graylin Arnold, safety, who was put on injured reserve with a quadriceps injury. Uh, aside from that, no major injuries that the Texans haven't been dealing with for this past month. Now for the Miami Dolphins, uh, the list is pretty long, uh, but a few just nicks and knacks here and some guys are listed as out. Uh, so we have Teddy Bridgewater quarterback. He is listed as questionable with a knee injury. Then we have Raheem Mostert listed as doubtful with a knee injury as well. Uh, Byron Jones is confirmed out, uh, but that was as of last week with Achilles injury. Maybe he uh, the status could change, but just what's going on there uh the last game against the texans manuel agba was placed on injured reserve with a triceps injury it's very unfortunate uh and then we also have liam eichenberg offensive tackle placed on injured reserve uh with a knee injury brandon jones safety injured reserve knee injury nick needham injured reserve achilles injury trey flowers linebacker injured reserve foot injury and uh everything else is from early october so not going to go too much into that, but let's talk about these two teams. Dolphins are, you know, doing pretty well for themselves. Seven and three, four and one at home and uh, coming fresh off the bye. And the schedule makers pretty much gave the Dolphins a layup to come out of the bye uh, because the Houston Texans just are net to winning. This is very unfortunate for them. I mean, no team ever <laughs> wants to tie ever. Uh, but somehow, kickoff of the season, Houston Texans did it. Uh, but ever since then, have barely able, been able to get a win. One in eight so far, aside from the week one uh, tie. And then the Miami Dolphins, like I mentioned, seven and three, four and one at home. And offense is clicking. Defense is starting to turn a page and, uh, you know, really shut people down when it really matters. And, uh, those are some things that they're going to have to do. We'll get into that in a second. Let's talk about what these both teams are averaging so far this season. Texans are averaging about 16 points per game. They're at 15.9, so I'll give them I'll give them the round up to 16. Miami Dolphins 25.2. Then we have points allowed. Houston's allowing 23. Well, meanwhile, Dolphins are allowing 24.1. Uh, and then total yards offensively, Houston's averaging 308. Dolphins are averaging 403. Uh, Dolphins edge them out in both categories in terms of passing. We have uh, 214 yards passing for the Texans, 305 for the Miami Dolphins. Uh, yards rushing 93.7, 97.7 for the Dolphins. Uh, yards allowed 401. Meanwhile, the Dolphins are allowing 370. And then uh, pass yards, Texans are allowing 223. Meanwhile, the Dolphins are averaging 253. Uh, and then Rushing yards allowed 178.9, and then uh, for the Texans, 116.9 for the Dolphins. So, as you can see, the Dolphins are getting better defensively. If you've noticed, each week those numbers are go going slightly down and slightly down, and uh, that's exactly what you want to see and hear. Just getting closer and closer and closer to the end of the season, hopefully making that playoff push, and hopefully, you know, just prepping for the playoffs if you can make it there uh so you know both teams are on opposite ends of the spectrum here dolphins are playoff hopefuls uh if not at this point you can possibly put them at playoff contenders 
and then uh, Texans are just probably bottom of the barrel of the NFL. And more than likely, if this rate go keeps going, they'll end up getting the number one overall pick. Uh, so what would they do with that? Who knows? So let's get some keys to victory and then we can wrap this thing up. So we have probably one of the more explosive rookie running backs in the NFL, and that's in Damian Pierce. Uh, you know, he's had some flashes here and there, but nothing too crazy. It's just he's very consistent. He's very aggressive with his runs. So those are some things to look out for. Uh, so defensively, stop the run as much as possible. As much as I'd love to see Damian Pierce go off because I'm a pretty big fan of his, I would rather not see him do well against the Miami Dolphins. And I think that's one of the more keys to the Texans offense is just they can get that running game going, then maybe they have a chance. Uh, and it's not it. You, you just got to stop the run. Because once this runs start going off, then the whole entire playbook opens up for any team in the entire NFL. So just something to consider. Now, offensively, I think the Miami Dolphins need to exploit the Texans' weak run defense and just keep on getting the ball into Jeff Wilson's Raheem Mostert's hands. Hopefully Raheem Mostert suits up. If not, give him an extra week of rest. That hopefully should help him out. But yeah, if you can get Jeff Wilson continuously going offensively, especially in the running game, and just see what this offense could really do, especially against someone who they would consider as a lesser of a team. Uh, aside from that, protect Tua, plain and simple. Never want that guy getting hit uh, ever again, especially after what Dolphin fans have gone through this entire season uh, for the first uh, three to six weeks. That was uh, very rough. <laughs> uh, but yeah, protect Tua, run the damn ball, stop the run. And, uh, you know, I want to see interceptions from the secondary. I want to get see some turnovers happening. Uh, hopefully, you know, Davis Mill just throws up some that the Dolphins could come now with. That would be pretty cool. Aside from that, Dolphins just need to put this game away as quick as possible just because you don't want a team like Houston lingering around. And it's not saying that, you know, Houston has that upset ability, but it's just saying this is a team that you should beat. And at the end of the day, there shouldn't be an issue beating them. Uh, teams like the Philadelphia Eagles had no problems dealing with them. So I am fully expecting the Dolphins to do just the same. Aside from that, hope you guys enjoyed the video. And yes, at the new spot, uh, for those of you who do know. Uh, but yeah, it's pretty bare right now with some of the decorations. Just uh, been trying to settle in. and Just wanted to throw this video together and put it up for you guys. Uh, hopefully tomorrow, maybe you'll see some more stuff on the shelves or, you know, lights in the corners, stuff like that. But aside from that, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.